church family good evening we are outside today tonight this evening coming to you outside we thought we'd pick a different uh, venue we're on the love seat and we're going to do another small group lesson with you first we want to thank our proud sponsor dr pepper <laughs> We don't have a sponsor, but if Dr. Pepper would like to sponsor us, I'm sure they'll want to get a hold of us after they see this segment, don't you think? I think so. We thought we'd pick uh, today because the weather has been a little iffy uh, here in Illinois <laughs> every day this month, so we thought let's do it. Sunglasses and all, so you feel, feel the vibes, feel the love out here. Well, tonight I wanted to pick a, a, a topic that I think is, is really uh, great for all of us. It's Philippians 4. We're going to look at verses 4 through uh, 7. And it, it's talking about how we can rejoice, have a, a, a great attitude, not worry, and pray. So um, maybe we'll just start. I'll, I'll read the first uh, couple verses. Yeah. In uh, The NIV says it this way. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and I'll say it again, Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all, the Lord is near. Uh, I, I want to read it one more time in another translation because I, I think a lot of times when we, when we read it in more than one translation, we get a little bit different twist on it and it gather a little more depth. Uh, the uh, Passion New Testament reads this way, be cheerful with joyous celebration in every season of life. Let joy overflow, for you are united with the Anointed One. Let gentleness be seen in every relationship, for our Lord is ever near. Um, so, Rosanne, let me ask you a question as we look at that first. Rejoice in the Lord always. Uh, how do you rejoice always when life isn't always joyful? Well, for me, I guess I think back on times, um, particularly now when we're going through a lot of disruption and unsettling feelings. Uh, I go back to a time when I've had issues or problems in the past and how God brought me through um, and that my worrying didn't add one, as the Bible says, one day, one hour, one anything to my life. So why worry? Why get upset? why not rejoice and that's kind of how i do it i have to go back and again think on times when god has and he's always come through for us i i agree with you but i think there's a secret in here uh the secret's hidden in that first part of uh that fourth verse i, I think we can read right over it without really grabbing a hold of what paul's really trying to tell us he says rejoice in the Lord always and, and when we're able to rejoice in the Lord even if life isn't going perfect right. uh, we have that stabilizing force of our faith with God and and he's telling us uh, bring it back to center by bringing God in the middle of this and knowing that even though the situation might not be ideal right now uh, you have that confidence of, of walking with God of of knowing he's there that makes all the difference in the world. But you have to settle your mind down as well to get to that point. You know what I mean? I'm just, you yeah. don't have to. I, I wonder if that's why Paul said, he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And then he repeats himself. Probably for me. <laughs> I, I think he repeats himself because all of us need to hear it again. And and he said, I'll say it again. Rejoice. It, it seems like it's, it's almost redundant right. for our benefit yeah. Yeah. Uh, rejoice that means have joy again right um, so how do you have joy again feeling the Lord's presence I think so just, just doing kind of like what you were saying pray you, and uh, meditate you know. on the word and, and getting close to God I mean in times that are stressful for me I have to go to the Lord right away. I have to get that, you know, the Lord is near. I have to grab a hold of that. 
Um, I, I think Otherwise, you spiral out of control, and then you're so far. You know, I think you're just. So I think far. I think all of us have had had times in our life when we we haven't went to the Lord right away. Mm -hmm. We've we've went to our emotions. We've looked at the situation. Uh, yeah. we, we've seen our circumstances uh, being uh, bigger than life, this huge mountain that uh, that we can't overcome. And it was only afterwards that we maybe settled our thoughts and 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 realized that, yeah, we still have God. I'm we gonna, still have something that we can hang on to. I think I might have said this the very first week on our q and I, I just kind of made a mental uh, statement to myself that when this is all over, this stay at home, lockdown, whatever we're calling it, is over, I want to end, at least I want, I hope my family, you don't have to make any faces, but uh, <laughs> sees that I was more positive than negative throughout this whole process, that when it's over, I want to say I did some good, I helped people, I loved my family, I tried to protect those around me and our church family and do the best I could do. And and that's that's kind of what I'm, you know, my goal for this. I think it's a great goal. Um, when we think about our actions and how do our actions... In, in verse 5, the New Living Translation, uh, the last part of that verse where you, you know the NIV says you let your gentleness be evident to all I, I really like the way the New Living reads it says let everyone see that you're considerate in all you do mm -hmm. um, how do our actions testify of our faith how do our actions testify of our faith I think our actions say everything about our faith you know, we're either gonna move with God and trust God, or we're gonna we're gonna go walk in fear. And I, I really, that word fear has come up so much in our, um, especially in our society today. I, I just really am kind of tired of feeling fearful, hearing fearful things on TV, hearing fearful things from other people that this is gonna happen and that's not gonna happen, and that I think our actions, we just have to speak the word of God. I think people have to see our faith. They have to see our faith in well, action, exactly. how we respond to different situations in life. The, the people we respect are those that that we see uh, trust God time, under yeah. pressure. Right. Oh, yeah, you, you know, pressure perfects always, us. Always. And it also brings out the greatest flaws that we right. have. So uh, people that we respect, people that have a deep faith, have the ability, I think, uh, to just let the thoughts center on God for a moment without speaking what they're feeling right out of their mouth. Exactly. You have a good friend that just went through some a very serious accident. You were going to share yeah, about I, that. Uh, that's one of the reasons I picked this, uh, you know, the last part of that, uh, that, that fifth verse says, the Lord is near. And I have a good friend, he, he lives in Quincy, uh, him, you maybe heard me talk about him and his wife, I, I married in uh, Israel with another pastor, a uh, great guy, and uh, just last week, he had a very serious accident where uh, he was moving some trees and different things, and, and the vehicle that he was in, there was a, a tree that was two feet in diameter uh, that was pinned against his leg. Mm -hmm. And, and it pinned against his leg in this cab. And he, he, since then, he's had surgery. He had to have a plate put in, different mm -hmm. thing else. But when uh, when he called me back after he'd gotten over the, the initial shock of everything, he he said, "Stan, I I know this sounds odd, and I, I I've never considered myself a Bible scholar, but when I was in in that cab of that that vehicle, and, and that." tree was pressed up against my leg I felt the Lord's presence wow. I, I, I felt peace it didn't wow. it didn't make sense right. you would normally feel panic uh, but but I felt yeah. peace yeah. and I was able to get the bucket moved around to to, to get the, the tree off of my leg and um, he said my wife gave me a hard time because it didn't call 911 right away so I I called a buddy of mine and I was telling him about the situation 
and he said, I need you to call 911. And he, and he said, yeah, but why would you call me first? Because they're not going to know how to find me. Oh, and, and he yeah, said, I need you to call right away because I'm about ready to pass out. Smart. And uh, his friend got the, the emergency crew there and they were able to uh, get him out of the vehicle. But So that was also, uh, yeah, that was tremendous strength and obviously God's presence was with him. It kind of leads into the next uh, part of Philippians. I, I told Dave too, I, I said, you're going to use that testimony to encourage somebody else. And I'll have to call him tomorrow and let him know I used his testimony to encourage somebody else because he said, you know, I wasn't fearful at the time. I, I was calmer than I should have been. I was able to maneuver the, the bucket around and get that huge tree off and, and make the phone calls. And uh, it's going to be okay. That's awesome. Kind of leads into the next part of Philippians 4, 6, verses 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So, Sian, uh, don't be anxious about anything. Uh, yesterday. How uh, can we do that? <laughs> yesterday was a very anxious day time for all of us um, our, our daughter threw her, threw her back out uh, she couldn't sit in a chair she couldn't even lay down uh, she was crying she was in terrible terrible uh, pain. Her, her little boy was five minutes five months old close to it uh, almost five months old he looks like he's ten months old uh, <laughs> he, he saw his mom upset he's crying and, and then Roseanne's crying so I had three generations of people crying in my living room all at once. <laughs> it was a little overwhelming. Yes. You hear a yesterday baby afternoon. And your child crying. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you the question. <laughs> well, while things are a little calmer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, Paul tells us, don't be anxious about anything. But sometimes that's a hard thing to do. Oh, yes. Sometimes it's a very hard thing to do. It is. Uh, so. How do we not be anxious? Because you had some anxious moments yesterday. Yeah, it was. It, I mean, it seems like when things start going, they kind of get ramped up pretty quickly. And, um, well, they do at our house probably because of me. But, no, it was uh, one of those unexpected, crazy things that happened, and we were all pretty upset. Um, I just stopped, and Sienna and I began praying for her. I prayed for her. Um, and the minute I, be I went in the room and the minute I began praying over her, um, she calmed down, I calmed down, you know, you get back to center again, the baby calmed down, he, he eventually went to sleep and, and everybody's uh, better today. I, I think one of the things that I thought was so cute is we're watching, here's mom on the floor crying, <laughs> trying to get comfortable yeah. crying. Once she calmed down, uh, the, it, we put the little guy... Uh, Louis by her and and he saw his mom was okay he started laughing yeah, he was calm right. too yeah 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 it was great so if you can learn how to hang handle life without being anxious I, you can see how that that peace and that calm spreads to everyone it, around it, you it did work and we've had several of those instances as you all have that's why when we do these from our home it seems more natural to begin sharing with you because we'll have problems and issues not problems but issues sometimes daily and so it's pretty easy to talk to you about rejoicing as well as being anxious about fear um, we prayed for healing though and um, for her and, and I thought the way God answered it God doesn't always answer our prayers yeah. the way that we we right. would like right We'd like healing instantly. Right, and her to, uh, yeah, yeah, feel 100 just okay, better. get up. Yeah. You know, there's You're times good. that yeah. that that might happen. But sure. Yesterday it didn't, but what did happen was uh, Roseanne called Sue. Well, she's had a lot of back issues in the past. She came over, Our good and yeah. she'd had a very similar experience to what Vanessa was experiencing many times, and she was coaching her through the process. Right, right. And you could just see that Vanessa was calming down yeah. as she uh, gained that comfort, encouragement, and, and wisdom that 
that Sue had. Even though I was upset, I had this. I was the one that called Sue. Just so you know, I had the sense and sensibility to do that. But she brought comfort, wisdom. Um, she brought encouragement to the situation. Don't ever hesitate when you're going through a rough time either to call a friend. It sounds like the game show, call a friend, phone a friend, but really do. Because sometimes a friend can come in and just, they walk where you walk or are walking right now and can really help you bring calm to that situation. So, um, so we, we weathered that storm and, and we'll keep you posted, but right now everything's pretty good. Uh, how does Paul tell us to pray, though, in verse 6 when he's talking I about... Think, I think one of the things that he mentions, and it, it's, uh, as I've done a study on prayer many times, you see this popping up over and over again. And one of the things that pops up in, in prayer is, is having a thankful heart. And, and he, he, he talks about bringing our requests to God yeah. with thanksgiving. I, I think if you if you have that mindset, if you have that thought process is going on, it, it's, it, it tells a little bit about your faith, first of all, right. that you're thankful for the many blessings right, that you have. Right. So you're not just looking at life as something that's that's empty all the time. It, you're, you're seeing some real possibilities in life and you're right. thankful for what you have, even if the, maybe the situation you're in is, is a negative well, one. We talked about that last night as a family, and we're thankful we were all together, they were happens so yeah we had a lot of great things to be thankful for how does God's peace dif is different from the peace we feel when nothing's wrong that's that's the peace that uh, is supernatural that that's the peace that Dave was talking about in his accident can we have that all the time there's, every day you know there's times when God just pours out his grace and, and he gives us he gives us peace when we need peace and, should pray and, for that peace every day, though, just to cover us. And well, I think part of that peace comes as we trust God, yeah. and uh, it, it's a byproduct of our faith. As yeah. we as we trust God, that that peace settles in on us. That right. comfort settles in on us. That that Romans eight twenty eight, all things work We're together for the, the good of yeah. those who God, love God, gives us that that hope that the situation is just going to be a temporary one. And God is going to bring us through again. But but I love the way that Paul says this in verse 7. There's so much more in these verses. I was going to read many more, but uh, we, we thought we'd just do 4 through 7 because there's so much there. He said, the peace of God, which is beyond our understanding, it's not a natural peace. No. It, it, it's, a, it's a time when, when panic should be the, the mode of the natural. Uh, it, it, it says it'll guard your hearts. Mm -hmm. uh, when the Bible talks about the, the heart, it, it's also talking about our our emotions and, and, and our minds. Our minds are the things that go go wild when we find ourselves in that, that panic mode. Like last night. Yeah. It was temporary. temporary. It was temporary. Yeah. So God gives us that peace that that transcends understanding. And it guards our hearts and, and guards our mind in Christ Jesus. Re remember at the very beginning, I'm going to go back to the very beginning before we close. It says rejoice in the Lord. See, it's in the Lord that we have these benefits. Yep. In the Lord that we experience His peace. Yes. In, in the Lord that we can, we can have that thankful heart. In, in the Lord that we can pray. In the Lord that we can... Uh, trust God when it seems that like a dark place we can have that glimmer of hope because that we have that eternal hope inside of our heart yeah. it's good. so as we wind down this uh, short study tonight why, why don't we pray for uh, the people that are watching this video yeah. like we would consider that an honor uh, uh, Father God, we come before you tonight and, and we thank you so much for our church family, Lord. We're, we're so thankful for the way they've supported us, the, not only the cards and letters and notes, but the, uh, the giving that still keeps the church going, still helps us, Lord, to be able to support our missionaries and staff and, and, and reach out and, and, and touch charities. And we thank you for that. We thank you for the people that call Cokie Mill. Christian church their home and we ask you Lord to bless them 
uh, not in a small measure, Lord God. We ask you to, to bless them richly. Uh, we, we pray that any anxiousness that they might have might be turned into your peace and that you would guide and guard their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Thank you for blessing them now, Lord, and blessing their families. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. Have a great week. Love you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.